Hello, son. How's schooling so far? Son, you look problematic. Daddy, what's wrong? I'm having a hard time understanding our lesson. Please, I'm help sorry me. to hear that, son. But don't worry. I have a solution for that. Really? What is it, Daddy? Subscribe Stiff Spheres Vlog and follow Balanti High School Video Lessons. Yay! I will! I will! Okay, son. Enjoy watching the video. Hello there, grade 7 students! It's nice to see you again! It's me, your virtual English teacher. I am Sir Stephen, but you can call me Sir Stiv or Sir Stiff. How are you? Were you able to answer and finish all the exercises and activities in your learning activity sheet? Who helped you do it? Oh, that's good to know. By the way, were you able to watch my video lesson on that topic? Uh-huh. I hope you are watching all my video lessons because they can help you understand more and clearer our discussion every week. For today, I will discuss the third lesson for the first quarter. Are you ready to have our lesson now? I can't hear you. Are you ready to have our lesson now? I well then, can't. let's begin. Alright, let us start our lesson for this week. English 7, Quarter 1, Week 3. For this week, our learning competency is Use the passive and active voice meaningfully in varied contexts. For this week, the important terms we have to understand are passive and active voice. In order for us to easily grasp and understand this week's lesson, let us recall first the different uh, tenses of verbs. So we have here the verb tense chart. Let us, be, uh, let us remember that there are different tenses of verbs. So when we say tense, it talks about the time. Time when an action is done, is being done, or when it was done. So we have what we call simple, progressive, perfect, and perfect progressive. Each of these uh, verb tense has, has its uh, different uh, forms. There are past, present, and future form. You have to remember the different forms of these verbs because you will be using them later as we discuss active and passive voice. For simple tense, of course, for past, this is the verb. So the verb may be either a regular or an irregular verb. So a regular verb just needs uh, ed or d at its end, while an irregular verb needs to change its spelling. I walk to the store. So, walked here is our past tense. For the present tense, we use the base form of the verb. The form of the verb depends upon the number of the subject. If the subject is singular, of course, the verb uses letter S. If the subject is plural, the verb does not take an S form, except for pronouns I and you. I walk to the store. Walk is our present tense of the verb. For the future tense, I will walk to the store. For the future tense, we use the form will or shall 
plus the base form of the verb. Example, will walk. Remember, if we use will and child, the verb must be in its form. No letter S, not in its past tense. That is our simple tense. Each of these tense has its own purpose. For the past tense, it talks about past action. For present tense, it's either it talks about present action or it states fact and so on. For future tense, it tells something about in the future, what will be done in the future. Now, moving forward, we have the progressive form of the verb. Progressive or continuous form. Progressive takes the ing form, meaning to say the main verb must end in ing. Example, for the past tense, I was walking to the store. The subject is I, that is why we use the link verb was, and then succeeded by the verb walk plus ing. I was walking. Past progressive tense. For the present progressive tense, I am walking to the store. So since uh, the link verb that must be used is present tense, so we use am instead of was and instead of is because the subject is I. You don't say I is. So we would say I am. I am what? Walking to the store. I and G4. For the future tense, I will be walking to the store. So we take the will plus the, plus the progressive form of the verb. So I will be walking to the store. So when we say progressive, the action is continuously done. So it's progressive. Next is the perfect tense. This one is a little different. Here it requires you to memorize the different forms of the verb. Each verb has its perfect tense. Example, fly, flew, flown. Flow, flew is the simple fact, while flown is its perfect form or past perfect form. Sorry for it. So example, I had walked to the store. For the perfect tense, we always use uh, the auxiliary verbs had, have, or will have. Okay? Had is for past, have or has for present, depending upon the number of the subject, and then shall have or will have plus past participle for the future perfect. I had walked. Okay, this is the form. Had plus past participle. Always the past perfect of the main verb must be followed. So walk is the past perfect form. And then for the present, since I is a subject, it's uh, one of the excluded subjects, so we don't use has, we use have. So I have walked. I have walked to the store. For the form of the future perfect, I will have walked to the store. Again, these tenses of verb uh, follow certain purposes. So I won't discuss yet uh, what it means. I am just recalling you. I'm just helping you recall the different forms because you need to, to remember them for later's main discussion. For the perfect progressive, so since it's uh, progressive still, we will use the perfect form of the verb, but we will use the ing form. So had still used for past, has or have for present, future is will have or shall have. The only difference is we will use been plus continuous or progressive form of the verb. Example, I had been working to the store. That's for the past. Okay. For the present, I have been walking to the store. And for the future, I will have been work uh, I will have been walking to the store. So these are the different forms of the verb you have to remember because you will be using them later on. So, let us proceed now to our main discussion. Use active and passive voice meaningfully in varied contexts. So, we will have different situations wherein we have to apply the active and passive voice. Now, it says here, 
The use of active and passive voice will vary on the ideas that you are trying to convey. So the, the, the meaning depends, the use of the active and passive voice depends on the meaning we want to convey in our sentences. Active voice is sometimes better selection than passive voice. However, there are instances whether passive voice can be more suitable and sophisticated and desirable to use. So just like what I said, it depends upon the meaning you want, you want to convey. You may use them together depending on the framework topic of your sentences and the piece of manuscript you are writing. In other words, active and passive voices have appropriate uses and locations and using them properly and correctly you will make your writing more effective and more efficient. So you must know how to play with active and passive voice. Now, according to Murat of 2002, when we say voice, isn't it tense talks about time? Now, voice is a feature of a verb. So it's also a feature of the verb. Wherein, it indicates whether the subject is of the sentence is the doer or the receiver of the action. So I repeat, voice is a feature of the verb which helps us identify whether the subject is the doer or the receiver of the action. These two special forms of verbs are active voice and passive voice respectively. So when it's active voice, it says here, it's the normal voice. What's the normal voice? This is the voice that we use most of the time. In the active voice, the object receives the action of the verb. Or simply, the subject is the doer of the action. Okay? For the active voice, the subject is the doer of the action. The one being talked about is the one doing the action. What is the form? Doer of the action or subject plus verb plus the object or the receiver of the action. So we have here examples. The Department of Education employs numerous nurses. So who is being talked about? It's the Department of Health. This is the subject. So what does the Department of Health do? Or what is it doing? It employs. So the Department of Education employs who? Who receives the action? They employ numerous persons. So this is the ordinary form of our sentences. So it's the normal form. So this is what we call active voice. The subject is the doer of the action. While on the other hand, when we say passive voice, okay, the subject is the receiver of the action. So it says here, the subject receives the action of the verb. The receiver of the action comes before the verb. It is the subject of the sentence. Also by Morat 2002. Our form is receiver of action plus the word uh, plus the big B verbs am, is, was, where, are plus past participle of the verb. Okay. Let me say past participle. The ones we use in the perfect tense. Okay. And then plus the preposition by and then doer of the action. So this must be remembered. This is our form. Example. A while back, sentence, the Department of Education employs numerous nurses. The sentence, uh, this one, this one, the subject is the Department of Health and it does the action. On the other hand, if we convert it to a passive voice, it becomes like this. Numerous nurses are employed by the Department of Health. So we start with the receiver of the action, numerous nurses, and then plus the be verb, since it's plural and employees is in its present form, then we use are. Okay, take note of that. When we convert uh, the verbs from active to passive voice, let us be Keen, let's be observant of the, the tense of the verb. This will help us what we verb shall use for the passive voice.
So are employed past participle and then by and then the subject of the doer of the action, the department of health. Okay, let's have another example. So let's have the second example. COVID-19 changed the lives of many Filipinos. COVID-19 is the subject and it does the action of changing. Who changed? COVID-19. Okay. Change what? Receiver of the action. The lives of many Filipinos. So when we convert it, this will be our subject. The lives of many Filipinos. And then take note of the tense. It is in its past form. So we will use we will use the past form of the verb, the, the be verb. So it's either uh, was or where, depending on the subject, COVID-19. Ah, no, no, no. Uh, in this sentence, it's the subject. But in this sentence, the subject will be uh, lives of many Filipinos. So plural. The lives of many Filipinos, plural past, were changed by subject a while back COVID-19 okay you get it hmm? I hope so I hope uh, I am not mabulo in this class let us continue the object of the active verb becomes the subject of a passive verb so they interchange position the active voice it's the subject when you convert it uh, its passive voice becomes the, okay, the object and vice versa. Example. During this time, during this pandemic time, our province needs dedicated and hardworking Tarlakenos. So, doer is the, our province. Their action is, they are needing. Needing what? Dedicated and hardworking Tarlakenos. So, when we transform it into passive voice, this becomes the subject, dedicated and hard work in Tarlakenos, and then needs present form, so it's either is, am, or are. Since uh, Tarlakenos plural, so we will use are. Are and then past participle form are needed, and then by our province during this pandemic time. Clear? Okay, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Here are uh, the different forms of active and passive voice. Okay? Okay. Let us continue now. So a while back, I discussed with you what active and passive voices are. Now, let us talk about uh, the different forms. In this part, uh, you will be needing the, the knowledge uh, the knowledge I I helped you to recall a while back when it comes to the different forms of verb according to their tenses. So you will be needing the tenses of verbs uh, knowledge in this part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So you can see here the different tenses of verb just like what I taught you a while back. So you have to recall the different forms, okay? because you will be needing them. Now, uh, allow me to explain each uh, various form of, varying form of active and passive voice. So let's begin with a simple present. For a simple present, example, the janitor cleans the mess of the COVID-19 patient. So the subject is janitor, singular. So the verb is present form, letter S. The object is mess okay mess of what uh, of the COVID-19 patient so when we convert it so the mess becomes the subject the mess of what of COVID-19 patient and then this is uh, present form so we use either am or is we don't use am because there is no pronoun I here so we will use is since mess is taken as singular the mass of the COVID-19 patient okay, is, and then past participle form, cleaned, and then by, by whom? The janitor. 
You get it? Okay. So we use is because single present tense. For the progressive tense, it becomes like this. At present, the world is inventing a vaccine for COVID-19. What is our progressive uh, verb? We have is inventing. So we will consider this. For the present progressive, we need to uh, change the form. So we will take is, but we will be adding the word being to indicate progression. So being. And then past participle for form of the verb, invented. So it will be like this. Uh -huh. At present, you can take this. At present, a vaccine for COVID-19. A vaccine for COVID-19, so singular. So we will take is, is, and then plus being, being, and then past participle form of the verb, being invented by whom? By the world. Okay? You get it? Okay, let me erase everything so that. Uh, now, let's continue. Done, simple press, oh, sorry. Uh -huh, sorry for that. So done. On. Next, simple past. Recall the form of the simple uh, past uh, verbs. Example. Genera or genera, fixed, simple past. Just add D or ED. My social amelioration form. Okay? Genera is the one who fixed the social amelioration form. So when we convert it, mm -hmm, same process. Social amelioration form. My social amelioration form is the subject. Singular or plural? Singular. And then since fixed is, is in its past form, simple past, we will use uh, the simple past linking verb, was. Was, and then plus past participle, fixed by genera. Okay, clear. Next. Okay. Present perfect. Uh, this time, we have to recall the perfect tenses of the verb, okay? The policemen have recovered the lost staff. Policemen is the subject. We use have since it's plural. And then plus past participle form the verb. Recovered what? The lost staff. So when we convert it, we will take the lost staff. The lost staff. And then, <coughs> is it singular or plural? Oh, it's singular. So has instead of have because we changed already the subject has and then we add been okay we add been plus past participle form of the verb the law staff has been recovered by whom by the policeman okay next for the continuous uh, progressive past continuous progressive hmm? i was painting the room when the asymptomatic man came, man came in so, I is the subject, okay, simple past, uh, was plus continuous form, painting what? The room, okay? So, the room now becomes the subject of the passive voice. The room, then, was painting, we will take it, but we will just add being plus past participle, just like uh, is being, but this time, it must be past. So, was being and then past participle painted by me since the subject is I by me we make it object I me when the asymptomatic man came in okay next almost done for simple future hmm? Kura will assist the medical practitioners tomorrow so Kura is the subject and then we use will plus base form of the verb will assist the medical practitioners. So the medical pr practitioners now uh, becomes the subject of the second sentence. The medical practitioners, and we will take will, and then this time we will use be. Okay. Will be, and then plus past participle, assisted by Kura tomorrow. Okay. Next, simple feature, uh, be going to. So we will use be, be verb means uh, is, am, um, are. Okay. Is going to, are going to, uh, and so on. Depending upon the subject. After lockdown, COVID-19 uh, 
is going to buy a new computer at SM Tarlac City. So, COVIDA is singular, so we use is. We did not use am because the subject is not I. Okay? So, when we convert it, <clears throat> a new computer. So, a new computer, and then we use is going, is going to, we will just add B again. B plus past participle. A new computer is going to be bought by whom? Covida where? At SM Tarlac City when? After lockdown. Okay. Next, for the future continuous or future progressive form, uh, we will use this one. At 9 a.m., Secretary Duque will be visiting you. So this is the simple future continuous form. Will plus be plus progressive verb. Okay. And then, so we will convert it. So this becomes the subject. At 9 a.m., you and then will be we will take will be uh, will be and then we will just add being so a while ago we added be now we will, we will add being will be being visited past participle form by secretary Duque. okay becomes the object mm -hmm. clear next future continuous going to mm -hmm. a while ago it's will now it's going to the frontliners at 9 p.m. The frontliners, okay, going to, since plural, are going to be checking the patients. Are going to be checking the patients. Uh, this has the same meaning with this one. It's only that the, the verb form is different. So when we convert it in its passive voice, mm -hmm, the patients becomes the subject. At 9 p.m. tonight, the patients, and then we will take are going to. And then are going to be. And then we will just add being again. And then we will convert checking to checked. Are going to be being checked. Okay. If it's progressive, we use being. To indicate progression. Since it's ing. So being checked by the front lines. And then used to. When we, when we use the verb phrase used to. Okay, let me erase. Secretary Anyo, singular, used to resolve. This is the verb phrase. Used to resolve what? The problems regarding COVID-19. So, the problems becomes the subject. The problems regarding COVID-19 and then used to plus B. Used to be resolved by Secretary Anyo. Okay. Next. When we use would always, my sister and Hara, and then would always, would always water the plants. So this is our verb phrase, would always water. Okay? When we convert it, of course, the plants becomes the subject. The plants, and then would always, and then we will add be in between, and then we will add ed for its past participle form. The plants would always be watered by whom? My sister and Hara. Okay? For future in the past, would. Mm -hmm. Future in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it's future tense, but it's in, in past, would. Because instead of will, we would use its past form, would. Don't get confused, okay? I knew. Uh, I knew Tino would complete the assignment by next Monday. So we have here a complex sentence. I is the main subject and then verb is new. So we will not take this one. We will take the dependent clause. Tino would complete the assignment by next Monday. Tino and then would complete what? The assignment by next Monday. So when we convert it, we take I knew, I knew and then we will just convert So, we will take, we will just consider this one. So, Tino will become the object. So, assignment will become the subject. I knew the assignment and then would, and then plus B, would be completed by whom? By Tino. When? By next Monday. Okay. So, I knew 
the assignment would be completed by Tino next Monday. Mm -hmm. Now, future again, but past form was. Okay. I thought, so we will again not consider this one. I thought what? Modifa was going to donate a convalescent plasma today. So I thought, and then was going to donate is our verb phrase. So we will use the object. I thought a convalescent plasma then was going to be donated by whom? By modifa when? Today. Okay? Get it? And lastly, can. People can buy groceries from that drugstore. So people is the subject. Verb phrase is can buy and then the object is groceries so groceries become the subject groceries can be and then plus bought a uh, plus past participle can be bought from uh, from that drugstore by whom by the people okay mm -hmm. remember to change a particular sentence from active to passive the verb in the original sentence must be transitive. So we have transitive and intransitive verbs. So when we say transitive, it's a verb that needs object to complete the thought of the sentence. But when it's intransitive, it does not need uh, an object. So this active and passive voice topic is only applicable if the sentence, if the verbs in the sentence we are talking about, in the sentences we are talking about are transitive verbs okay transitive verbs are the only ones that can be changed from active to passive voice uh -huh. in the given examples notice that the direct objects become subjects and the subjects become objects of the preposition by so they interchange in position notice too the change in the form of the verb although generally we use active mo most of the time because it is more forceful than the passive voice there are also instances when we have to use passive construction such instances are okay, when do we use uh, passive it was said normally we use active but there are some instances wherein we must use uh, passive voice when number one when the doer is not known we don't know who did the action Spanish influenza originated in Spain. Okay, so we don't say originated by, so no doer of the action. When it is preferable not to mention the doer, so when we don't like to uh, mention the doer of the action. Mm -hmm. The vaccine was disapproved, no need to say who does the disapproval. When the emphasis is on the receiver rather than the doer, right? Because in an active voice, the emphasis lies on the doer. So for passive voice, the emphasis lies on the receiver. He was awarded uh, the Nobel Hero. Okay, he was awarded. Mm -hmm. For number four, when giving objective or impersonal statements and when relating events of social or historical significance. Example, Bayanihan can be found anywhere nowadays so we use the passive voice can be found the can plus be plus past participle because the subject is something historical by any okay you get it there you have it our discussion now we will continue to the activity part for the activities okay for exercise one underline the verb then on the spaces provided, write A if the sentence is in an active voice and P if in the passive voice. Let's have the first one and then you do the other ones. In the quarantine facility, the father recognized his son even from a distance. So we have recognized. Okay, the doer is father. No, we cannot see the word by. So definitely this one is active. Okay, look for the verb. After again find the verb, uh, look if there is the preposition by. If there is, then it's passive. If there is none, it's active. Okay? For letter B, fill in the blanks with the passive form of the verb in parentheses. 
Okay, we have here an example. Matters regarding the open, opening of classes, and then we have this one to be converted, will discuss tomorrow by Deped Secretary Briones. So when we convert it into uh, the correct passive form, it will be, will be discussed. We add B plus past participle form of the verb. Oh, I'm sorry. Due to lockdown, all public gatherings consisting of 10 or more okay, will be then prohibited. Okay. And then you continue the other one. Let me check if there's there are other possible answers. past participle since it's simple past. Public gatherings, so plural, so we will use where. Since this one is simple pass. Where prohibited. All public gatherings consisting of 10 or more were prohibited by the government. Yes, that's correct. For letter C, change the following voice of the verb from active to passive voice. Use a separate sheet of paper for your answers. Example, the COVID-19 patients sang a thanksgiving song so you will convert it a thanksgiving song and then we will use uh, sim since this one is simple pass so we will use was was and then past participle song was sung by the COVID-19 patients let's have an example secretary Francisco Duque visited the affected COVID-19 families so we will say the affected COVID-19 families and then pass simple pass so where where the, the affected COVID-19 families were visited were visited by Secretary Duque so we use were visited because this is the appropriate passive form for a simple pass uh, verb in its active uh, voice okay just recall our discussion a while for letter D, change the following voice of the verb from passive to active. Oh, it's the other way around. Use a separate sheet of paper. So the quarantine pass was issued by the barangay captain. Was issued is for simple pass. So when we convert it, the barangay captain issued the quarantine pass. In the period. There's a missing period. Okay. This one uh, are discussed so are is simple present so the verb must be in its simple present so we would say the economists the economists discuss without es uh, discuss uh, the stock market losses okay very easy okay letter e Answer the following questions using the passive voice. Choose your answer from the box. The first number is done for you. Write your answers in the spaces provided. Who received the social amelioration program? Social amelioration program was received by the poorest of the poor. So social amelioration program was received by the poorest of the poor. Ah, okay, I got it. Now, who signed the Bionian to Heal Us One app? Who signed it? It was signed by Barangay Captain, DSWD, or President Duterte. You choose. Okay? For letter E, I letter F, use the given verbs in sentences. 
follow the indicated instructions for each number. Write your answers on the spaces provided. So example, conduct is the verb, passive voice, past progressive tense. Answer. A brief meeting, so you will uh, make your own sentences this time. So you will write your own sentences on the spaces provided, following the form of the verb needed, okay, depending on its voice. So passive voice is needed here. So a brief meeting regarding COVID-19, and then past progressive, so past, okay. was, and then progressive, being conducted. Simple past progressive. Was being conducted by whom? by spokesperson Harry Rocket. So the sentence was made uh, following the past progressive tense was being conducted since it is in passive voice. For number one, receive is your verb and then donate and so on. You have to follow active voice, present tense. Active voice, present tense. Hmm. Let's say, uh, Vice President Robredo present tense receives an award active voice receives an award so receives is present tense it has s because the subject is lobredo this one okay. and for letter g practice writing sentences okay you will write again your own sentences you will construct at least three three sentences interpreting the diagram so you have to interpret the diagram i hope you could read the words okay so you must interpret how uh, schematic diagram, how respiratory transmission, uh, what is the respiratory transmission route? So how does it go? So we would see here the infected individual and then the droplets when he coughs and then from the droplets, airborne and then for the susceptible individual, the one who is weak, then if there is direct contact, okay, indirect contact. If the droplets, uh -huh. there's another person involved here. Then direct contact with another person. Mm -hmm. So you have to interpret it. It's up to you, okay? And then on the spaces here, write the sentences. And your sentences will be graded according to quality of writing and grammar usage. So make sure you use correct grammar. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, you have to reflect now. How did you understand the lesson? I was able to identify sentences, agree, moderately agree, or disagree. So you have to check, 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 I'm sorry. You have to check the boxes here. Okay, I was thinking of a chicken, check. Uh -huh. What is your most important learning from this topic? So write a short paragraph. I learned that blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. There you have it, our uh, lesson for the third week. I hope this video can help you understand the topic since it's a little technical and difficult. If in case you still find it hard to understand, you can repeat my video over and over again. Alright? Please do not forget to follow me in my following accounts. Instagram and Twitter at Steve Spear. My Facebook account, Steve SP. And subscribe in my channel, Steve Spears Vlog. Once again, thank you very much and hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.